I'm I'm gonna jump literally right into it, right into uh, roadmap roundup because uh, yeah, there's a few things I want to do today outside of uh, commenting on this uh, specifically in-game stuff. But there was, I think, uh, from again, I haven't seen it in its entirety, but I've seen little snippets of it on Twitter and on on my Discord. You guys. This is a, this could be a really big deal. So let's, let's see roadmap roundup from this week, right? So notable changes, let me size it. So it ends up, hello, there we go. Notable changes are really, really a few stuff. So physicalized cargo updates. Again, they're only adding the new functionality to accommodate the release of the whole, the Miss Colsey. Uh, this includes both automated cargo loading, which we already saw, right? So it, it, it's functional as far as we could tell, as well as SCU containers up to 32 SCU. So still not giving any details on how that's going to work. My expectations are smaller ships will deal with one SCU boxes. Like, you know, the, uh, the Aurora, right? You're probably up to like perhaps cutlass right in like the 40 to 50 range but even that might be a bit much um then moving into like the two three four uh what what are all the sizes we have right we've seen 16 i think we've seen 24 and 32 so i if if i'm correct it's all divisible by eight um i think we've seen 24 in a previous update uh like a not a previous update but a a sneak peek we've seen uh i think we've seen 24 so i think depending on the ship size they or depending on like if you have 24 seu it's gonna be interesting like, have they figured out a way to automate this system of, all right, I have 20, I purchased 24 SCU of gold. Therefore, in a whole C, it's easy. We'll give you a 24 SCU box of gold. If I purchase 24 SCU of gold in a cutlass, does the, does the volume fit? Does the shape fit? Uh, that might be really interesting. Ah, there's not 24. Okay, so there's 1, 2, 8, 16, and 32. Thank you. But I think the the question still remains true. I think 16 is probably a little bit easier to deal with. But, you know, will the server do that, that calculation and determine what it should be? You would hope it would because as we've seen with the Hulsey and the Caterpillar and, and just generally uh, the Reclaimer as well, if you've gone salvaging with a big group and are creating a lot of boxes, all of a sudden your FPS, not the server FPS, your client FPS, whether you're looking at these boxes or not, tanks. Guys, I have a 5800X3D and a 3090 and 64 gigs of RAM. And we went out with a bunch of vultures and one reclaimer and was we were salvaging another reclaimer, I think. And dude, 10 FPS, maybe, if I was lucky, we were in the single digits. And it was it was just because we were mining. Um that that's really cool. Okay, fill the producer with the I think just the mission feature team. So this is interesting. Or are you more I Phil, I apologize for not knowing for sure, but are you more like an overarching producer? Maybe you're more overarching, but he said, I'll check with the team if we could do a QA on the new container sizes because the system is designed to optimize the amount of cargo containers it adds to the cargo grid. God, all Star Citizen feature teams. Okay, cool. Uh, Phil is from the Star Citizen Live on, on production uh, recently. Phil's super cool. And yeah, that would be sick. But at the same time, Phil, here's what sucks. This is, what, this is one of the things that sucks about Evocati. Let me know what you guys think uh, in Twitch chat or in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. Most things in Star Citizen 
are are never hidden. They're never a thing you need to explore and and learn about and find. Because it's either shared on uh, Star Citizen Live, ISC, uh, or it's an Evocati leak, or it's in PTU, right? So like before everybody gets it, you can't, you see it all. Now, I don't particularly mind that personally, um, because there still are things to uncover. Like I think I'm still learning about mining today, right? And how it works. So when it comes to the future, I think with more complex mechanics, that won't necessarily be the case. But something like that, dude, I would love to hear a Q&A of how it's going to work. Um, Because, again, I think the whole idea behind this isn't necessarily to make it easier for us. I think it's easier to make it easier for them, right? Larger containers, less entities. GG. It's the only thing that I think would make the whole C possible. Then for the progress tracker, uh, with this update, we wanted to make you aware of a few upcoming team changes on Star Citizen to better support upcoming tasks and to accommodate the additional development resources coming in from our Montreal studio, the USPU gameplay feature and systemic services and tools teams are being reformed into a pair of new teams. These teams will be the NAPU gameplay feature team, so I guess they're combining Montreal and Texas. Phil might be able to help us out with that. And then the economy team. This isn't just new team, new team, new team. The yes, USPU plus Montreal PU equals NAPU. Okay, perfect. The economy team. Now, I would get excited about that. And I am excited about it. I would get really excited about it, except this is 2019. This was your economy team. This was your economy guy. What happened? This was literally, he, he was the economy guy. My assumption doesn't work at the company anymore. This guy, they focused on dynamic events and they never made them dynamic. He's gone. Yeah, I mean, that's the the assumption here and has been gone probably for a really long time. How do we have an economy team? I'm curious. So... Back to this. That was 2019. That was the original Quantum demo, I believe. Or maybe the second one. And that that sucks. So hopefully, I am very excited because even if the economy team doesn't consist of Tony Z or... Uh, I forgot his name there. Ah, his name's escaping me. But to have something named that is a good thing. But this is the first we've heard about it as far as I can tell. So the majority of the USPU and systemic service team tasks will be given to these new teams, along with a few going to other teams. We'll have a few, uh, more info on these teams, their deliverables, and their schedules in the future. But for now, we're updating USPU and systemic service, service schedules until the end of Q3. Okay. So in the future, when we get updates like this from, from the uh, community team, don't mean... You know, there's no weight to the words in the future anymore. So it's kind of tough to to be like, all right, guys, this is going to be great. But for me, this is the single biggest update I've ever heard them say in, in terms of a, a a given team being made. Like, oh, yeah, the Montreal, uh, the Montreal ship team. Oh, my God. You know, we're going to be getting more ships. This is awesome. Eh? It's for me, it's more... The economy is going to be one of, if not the most important things we've ever had. And it is certainly one of, if not the most, 
degraded, ignored, uh, lost features uh, or or pieces of gameplay that we've had in this game to ever. It has never existed. It has never been cohesive. Uh, ship prices are all over the place. Um, there's no supply and demand. There's no anything. So if somebody is doing even an ounce of it, even an ounce of supply and demand, uh, armor prices, balancing anything, I'm happy, right? If we get any injection of, well, fuel is really cheap, but really important. How does that work when Quantanium is the most valuable item in the game and fuel is the one of the, the lowest costs that people have is quantum fuel, right? Uh, it's hard to hire an economy designer because they need, to, they need someone smart for it and usually good with Excel. Is that why you're not an economy designer, Jerry? Is that why you're... Do they not need smart people for gameplay design? I think every developer needs to be pretty smart. So, And, and everyone I've talked to has been pretty smart. Like, come on. Um, large parts of EVE Online, just because of the economy. Um, and EVE Online developed into a fully player-driven economy, and it is fun. Sure. But EVE Online, uh, we talked about it a lot on the Desync podcast, actually, coming up on Saturday. The A lot of people talk about EVE Online like it's this um, huge game that everyone plays, but they don't, right? Because... A lot of that is very niche and, and not uh, great. Now, uh, mission design is easy by comparison. And now imagine if you've already made a lot of the game and everything doesn't talk to each other, right? Like your fuel doesn't talk, your, your fuel, repair, rearm, ammo, uh, Mining equipment, <laughs> weapons, your armor, shields, quantum drives, uh, commodities, right? Like, nothing speaks to each other right now. Mission. Mission uh, buy-ins. Mission payouts. Rewards. None of these things exist together. And if you have to assume somebody named the economy team... It's their job to start linking these things together, right? Beacons work. They may work, but is 15,000 and, and no, you know, is that the right thing? So just connect them forehead. Yeah, that's obviously going to be a big undertaking. So I don't expect to see uh, a lot of this anytime soon, but this is another example of like, uh, oh my god, Mike, you know, sweetie Mike, or all these things, uh, when you when when you see something and them doing something positive, right? Like, the mining update comes out, and you can see how they did the mining update for the future, for something like an economy, uh, you know, and, and crafting and all those things. And you praise that, and people are like, ugh, my prospector isn't as good anymore, and they get mad. But in reality, them doing anything with the economy, whether it takes a little time or a lot of time to see some progress on that is, is huge. I wonder what that team consists of, how many people, because it needs to be a lot. The economy team needs to be a lot of people and it needs to not just be uh, a spreadsheet person, right? It needs to be people who understand that, uh, it needs to be filled with gameplay people too that understand that we are lacking not just a, a, a monetary economy but a progression economy a crafting economy a base you know a, a, an ownership of of land economy right apartments ships ammo armor weapons quantum drives all these things are a big part of it so it's going to take a lot. Is Qantas still a factor in this? I mean, I don't know. You have to assume it still is. It's the team is figuring out the values to probably plug in to Quanta. And then, you know, obviously turning it on wouldn't be easy, I would assume. But that has to be a big part of this is, 
is getting things right for it. Now, my other concern is, is this a citizen con bait? Is this a citizen con uh, panel with a couple new people and Tony Z and a PowerPoint and a whole lot of bullshit? Could be, right? Yeah, risk versus reward, right? Like everything that I know about the future of, uh, of salvage missions and the fact that they're kind of bugged right now and that the cargo in them is going to be pretty good. It feels like they're going to be out of balance, like too good. It's also, do you want fun gameplay economy or do you want a mirror of modern late stage, just late stage capitalism? Uh, because the two are completely different systems. I don't know if you, you have to have one or the other, to be honest. Um, and I think most people would say, do you want a fun gameplay economy? Right. But I guess some people in the star citizen economy or in the star citizen community, uh, really want things to be super simmy, but super simmy a thousand years in the future most likely won't be late stage capitalism uh would be my guess uh additionally we're also introducing the vehicle gameplay feature team this team will have a focus on the persistent universe and its vehicles with our existing vehicle feature team remaining on squadron 42 all three of these new teams will have their schedules updated on the progress checker very soon but we wanted to give you an early heads up that sounds like the montreal uh the Montreal ship team. It's kind of interesting to call it the vehicle gameplay feature team. Though. Because it sounds like they would be adding gameplay to vehicles. So like. Uh, and maybe they are. This is interesting. Okay. Hold up. Hold up. We have a number of things that are being worked on. Master modes. Uh, we had. Uh, capacitors we had uh i guess adding components everywhere right will this team do yeah mfds are coming things like that right will we have this team going through the backlog of all the ships that we currently have and doing a lot of gold standard reworks how would you guys feel if a team, you know, because a lot of people get upset because they purchase ships and the backlog isn't cleaning up. How would you feel if you had a team that was going through and and bringing the current ships up to a, a more modern standard? It's kind of it's kind of tough, man. I think it's a tough balance to to make and they're not meeting the demand. They are not delivering more ships than they are selling at this point, right? Personally, I would be more upset uh, about no gold standard reworks. That's my personal feelings. I think there are plenty of ships in the game that are plenty cool, and I don't think we need a lot of new ones. I do not need a mon mine laying ship. I don't need that. You you might, and that's fine. I'm not knocking you for, for thinking that, but I don't need a mine laying ship. Uh, I need the, the cutlass to actually have its components on the inside, right? That's how I feel. So, yeah, man. That was Roadmap Roundup. I I am trying to stay calm. Because seeing the economy team, when I have been yelling into this microphone for the last five years about an economy, an economy, an economy, progression, 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 and then you see that, it is so hard to not be like finally this is this is music to my ears this is so exciting this is oh my god it's finally happening guys it is two words in a in text in a roadmap update i have to remind myself that and maybe i i have to remind some of you of that Right? It's just when you see the things that you've been yelling about and they actually start doing it. Reputation. Oh, reputation. Right? Economy. Let's go. Mining. Crafting. Like this year, 
like the last 12 months i have been injected with a high dose of copium multiple times but nothing has quite hit yet right So it's, it's kind of like, you got to remain calm on these things, but you have to finally be happy with the fact that CIG feels like they are, they're looking at their product and going, this ain't it. This ain't good enough. We have to do better. And a big part of that, I think was the, the ball dropping, uh, with 318. I think 318 was probably one of the most uh, exciting times and the biggest drop of the ball that CIG has ever had, uh, which really sucks. And, and it just killed, like, where would we be right now in terms of like excitement and all that stuff around star citizen, if 318 dropped and it was where we are today with 319, right? Won't be excited about anything until it, uh, it's in the game too many lies uh, totally understandable like that's where that's where i i'm trying to pull myself back right we've read we have read we have heard and we have seen so many things that aren't in our game yet right it has to be starfield as well honestly it cannot just be a coincidence that they wake up same year starfield drops no way i don't think that that's really that 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 is necessarily the case. Again, anyone who's who's thinking that Starfield is a legitimate threat to Star Citizen is uh it, it, I think is is not really thinking super clearly. Uh will it be a distraction from people playing their current game right now? They should want that. They should want that cuz right now people playing Star Citizen is doing almost nothing for them from a feedback standpoint from anything. Right? Sure, when 320 drops, they're going to need their feedback in the PTU on Evo Cotti and a little bit in live. But after the patch is out and they know all the bugs they want to address, they know uh, all the the gameplay issues or or the, the feedback that they've given, nothing that we're doing in the game now is providing any value to CIG. It's only eating up server cost. So if anything, they, they should want us to be playing other games at this point because it just costs them money doesn't do anything for him. So that's my feelings on the roadmap update. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, am I huffing? Am I am I too excited for something that is likely not to see any um, real tangible, you know, change in the game for possibly a year or more? Or am I right to be happy that they're that they're moving at least in the right direction? What feels like the right direction and caring about the right things let me know